What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the Accio Audio Garage. Today we're going to be showing you how to install an aftermarket radio in your 2009 to 13 TSX. This is a 2010. This is a base, so this doesn't have the tech package. It doesn't have navigation. Uh, upgrading the radio in this is very simple. Upgrading the radio in your navigation or ELS TSX is a little bit more complicated. We'll cover that in a different video. But if this is a TSX you have, you want to stick around, I'll show you how to get the radio out, what wire harnesses you're going to need, what dash kit you're going to need, and then your radio choices. Also, something pretty cool that this car has already, Car Pew Ride. This is one of those Amazon gimmicks, but it's just mounted up here uh, with a, like, um, I'm not even sure what to call that, but it's like a suction mount. It turns on with the car, it goes into your cigarette lighter, and then it goes into the aux port for the car, and then you can also run a backup camera with it. But it's pretty cool, it'll give you wireless car play, and then like, um, you run it to your aux port so you get the audio out of it. I mean, it's like gimmicky, you can see the cables are all over the place, but if all you need is like maps or something, this might work for you. So here's what we're gonna be installing. We have the Aoto A6, uh, it looks like that. It is a floating screen unit. Uh, the body isn't gonna fit in a dash kit. We have our dash kit, which is the 957805CH. And then we have our wiring harness, the 701730, and then a 40HD10. We do have to customize our harness, so this isn't like, uh, it's not pinned correctly off the bat. We just gotta add a couple pins. Uh, ultimately, our harness will end up looking like this. Uh, and if you're looking for this, we do have it available on our website. If you're looking for the complete package, we do have it available on our website. The only, th only thing that's missing here is the AXWC. Uh, you will need that to keep your steering wheel controls. The Aoto has a steering wheel control input wire. It's called key one or key two. The Aoto has both wires. Uh, it has steering wheel key, which is what we're going to use, but then it also has the 3.5 input if your car is, you know, not resistive steering controls, but all Acuras are, so you're good to just wire it directly. All right, guys, so I'm just gonna open our dash kit so we can get our instructions. So here are our instructions. Let's just take a look at what panels we're gonna have to remove. So it says we're going to have to take off that to side trim, um, both sides, the center console, the pocket, very similar to the year previous uh, TSX removal. Then we have four screws disconnecting and then two screws below the radio. That's going to be important. And then we can get the radio out of there. All right. So let me get started and show you what that looks like. So we're going to have to remove this, remove that, remove this, remove this, remove that. And then we'll be able to unscrew this and then pull our radio out. All right, guys, you may be asking yourself what happens to that top screen when you replace the radio and nothing. The information will still show there. It's just the audio information will no longer show there, but all your other info will continue to show up there. Okay. So that comes right off. So then you remove the cover. Oh. Come on, buddy. There we go. We just need to disconnect the heat seeders. Okay, so those are disconnected. So that, so that entire panel comes out of the way and that exposes screws that we need to get on each side. So we had a screw up there and then we have a screw down here. So now we can pull this panel up and out of the way like so. Just be careful, you wanna not break it and it seems to be really in there, there we go. So those are the clips holding it up there. A couple clips down here. Just be careful when you pull that out. Pull up and out of that groove. There we go. So here we go, here's our other side. Now what's left to do is we have to get these pockets out. So under this, there's a Phillips screw that we need to get to, so let's do that quick. And you have to remove this in he inside the ashtray, this clips. So you want to remove this. That'll expose the one Phillips screw we need to get out. That our screw. We're just going to put it with our other screws. Now, that should free this up for me to just pull it out. But I'm actually going to release the clips and then pull it out like so. Now, I just need to disconnect my cigarette lighter. And then I can slide this to the side. It is holding the wire, so I'm going to use a uh, clip removal tool to release it. All right, so here it is, guys. The clip is right here. You just push at the top of it and slide it back. And then 
it had the wire clipped into here so we just use our panel to remove it so that removes that um, I did notice that one of our clips is missing so I'm gonna grab that from here and put our clip back all right guys so here comes the tricky part after you get these two top screws off you then need to get these bottom two screws off and they are really in there it's gonna take a really long screwdriver to even be able to touch them so I'm just gonna get an extension all right guys here I have a really long screwdriver it's probably too long but I'd rather be too long than not have enough room so with this I'm able to get to those screws it's all they're also eight millimeters so if you have really long eight millimeter socket just be aware that once you like loosen it it's most likely going to fall so you won't be as lucky as I was but here's what that screw looks like so it's long eight millimeter head so now I'm gonna grab the other one so once those four are out this should slide forward there's a total of eight screws that need to be removed four up here so one two three four five six seven and eight at the bottom once all those are removed you can slide this forward and then slide this out of the way at the same time i'm just going to disconnect these first So our climate control, and now our pocket should just come up and out of the way. Oh, our pocket has a light, so we just need to disconnect that light at the top. Just a little tab connector. So now our pocket is out, our climate control is out. <laughs> now we have a couple more screws to deal with. So we have two screws here and two screws right here. They're all really visible. So here, I'll show them to you. So here, here, there, and there. And then we're gonna reach behind our radio and push it towards us. So that gives me two more screws. And now I just have the ones that are up here. All of our screws out of the way. Now we can slide our radio forward and get it disconnected. So prying at the top helps. You just wanna be careful with this. It's very gentle. But now I should be able to just slide our radio forward and then I have a bunch of connections I have to disconnect. So we're gonna, before I do, I uh, just want you to know you need to have your radio code. So radio.navicode.accurate.com or something like that. I'll put it in the video. You wanna make sure you have your radio codes before you disconnect it. Because you go to put this back after a failed installation, you're going to need that code. So now that we disconnected our radio, I just want to show you some of the things we had to disconnect. So this plug um, is going to be one of a kind. You probably will not see it before. Um, it has a little tab here at the top. You press a little tab down and allows it to slide out. Um, there's a little tab. It'll be in. You're going to press that little tab down. And then as you pull this back, this will slide out. If you try to force it closed, it will not work. If you try to open it now, it will not move. That's the way it is. So just be aware for that connector. It is a special type. The rest, you're just pulling the little, you're just pressing the little tab. Uh, this is your HFL and some other connections. This is your subwoofer. All your primary speakers are here. XM and AccuraLink, and then your antenna. And then also you have some clips to deal with when you remove them out of the back. So you just pinch them and pull them out. And then this is for your hazards. So I'm going to get started on assembling the dash kit. All right, guys, now we have to build our dash kit. So we're going to be taking these clips and our vents and then adding the screws for the mounting bracket and then mounting our radio on. So I'm going to get that started and I'll show you guys what it looks like when it's done. Also, don't forget to move the hazard switch from the old uh, radio to the new one. So your dash kit should come with screws, the brackets, and then the actual kit. So we got all our items transferred. So you have to transfer all those clips. You have to remove the air vents, but those you install last. So you mount your brackets with the two supplied mounting screws on each side. Then you mount your radio to those brackets. This goes face down where the switch goes. And now we mount our air vents. Be very careful, the screws, that go into this plastic are very tight fit. So you wanna use hand tools. If you use a power tool, 
you could very easily just strip this and it will not help you also this plastic is very fragile you want to be very careful when installing everything and when putting it in the car you do not want to break or damage anything i don't recommend a auto radios i don't recommend amazon or ebay radios in general they always come with some sort of twist or turn so for this case we have rcas but none of them are useful for our application remember your factory your radio is going to fit a low level signal via rca to your factory amplifier this can't do that so it comes with line out converters to do so which is what we'll have to use it's going to be a ghetto solution if your radio is the same way you can use line out converters i don't recommend it i just recommend that you get a radio that has all the right features i understand these are attractive they have a low price point they have a lot of features but they don't make them to the right spec so they don't fit in the dash kits correctly you're gonna have to do some modifications steering wheel controls can be tricky to get them to work sometimes and then all the inputs and outputs that are standard and aftermarket radios aren't always standard on these so just keep that in mind now we have to take care of the wiring so i showed you the part number you're going to start with is the 7730 <clears throat> and the 40hd10 then you need to take pins from another one of these so you're going to buy two or you can buy the harness from us but you're gonna buy another one so you can take pins out. You're gonna put a pin right here in this top slot. You see this green black wire? That green black wire doesn't belong there. And then this green wire down here next to my red, one space over from the red, right next to the blue. That doesn't belong there. This is steering wheel control negative, steering wheel control positive is my green. You're gonna to need to add those two pins to keep your steering wheel controls or you can wire tap them. Everything else here is correct. Then we have the connector for our subwoofer and then we have the connector for our antenna. On the AOTO end, we're gonna to have to put our line out converters on the speaker wires and then we're culling matching the rest of the wires. The only thing that might trip you up is that steering wheel control uh, wire goes to the bottom row wire that you add here. So I'll show you all the wires once they're connected, but here's our wiring harness. Like I said, we need to add those line out converters for our speakers. So first they're color matching, then it's white to greens and grays to purples. Then here the only thing that is a little bit tricky is you have two oranges. One's the dimmer and the other one's the steering wheel control key. So you got to make sure you connect the right orange to the right orange. Then everything else is color matching. Your blues, you're going both your blues to the blue. Uh, and then you're going to leave these two wires alone. So steering wheel control key wire and the rear camera wire unless you're doing a backup camera. You'll notice I have five RCAs, but only four RCA ports. The last one is on a separate harness on the back of the radio. So I'll connect that when I mount the radio. So when you go to connect your harnesses, this white plug here, this gray plug here aren't connected. The three connections you use are these three. So your main power, sub, and antenna. So our initial tests have passed. Our steering wheel controls work. Um, our subwoofer works, all our speakers are working, so now it's just a matter of time of getting everything set up and put into place. Put this back together. The middle pocket goes in first, it has to slide into place, then goes your climate control. Remember, this middle pocket has a light, make sure you plug that light back in. Climate control has two connections, make sure you plug that back in. All right, guys, so here it is. Our steering wheel controls work. Our climate control information still shows up there, so I can still control it. The screen looks pretty nice. Your light here, your cigarette lighter, and your switches all still work. Putting this back together is just a matter of watching what you disassembled and then putting back the pieces. Overall, guys, I think this installation went pretty well. Um, mounting this radio is a little bit annoying. I don't recommend this radio. Uh, choose a name band radio. If you're looking for something like this, Boss has very affordable ones. If not, you can look at the, uh, all the name brands have one, Alpine, Kenwood, um, Pioneer. Like I said, my steering wheel controls work. The um, temperature up there works. Everything is working the way it should. Uh, it looks pretty good. If you're looking to do this to your car, check out our website, AccuraAudioGarage.com. We have all the harnesses the dash kits, and we also have radio kits available for this car. So if that's something you're looking for, make sure to check that out. Something I didn't cover in the installation is when you go to mount the radio, it's gonna clip in place, but then it has these two bolts from the factory that need to go back. So here, the two brackets are where the bolts go through 
and you're just gonna screw them down so that they secure the radio in place. The thing I briefly covered in the video is the reason why we use RCAs when replacing the radio with an aftermarket one. The reason is because your TSX has a factory amplifier. This is what it looks like. On the base and the ELS model, they both use amplifiers. The base amplifier is easy to integrate with. The ELS is harder to integrate with. That's why replacing the radio in your ELS equipped TSX or the navigation nav package TSX is a little bit more complicated. But this, when you replace the radio on the base TSX, you're able to keep all your speakers because you're retaining your factory amplifier. If you want to bypass your factory amplifier, we have the bypass available. But if you want to use it to keep all your speakers, you just want more features out of your radio, you definitely can. This powers all the speakers, so you'll get to keep your tweeters, your door speakers, your rear deck speakers, and your subwoofer when replacing your radio. You just want to make sure you use a low level signal because if you wire straight speaker wire to here, you're going to send a high level signal through this circuit down to the amp and then start frying your amp. It's going to work. It'll sound kind of terrible at louder volumes, but you're damaging this thing and eventually this thing is going to put out nothing and you're going to be like, why do I have no sound? And that is why. So just do it right the first time. Use RCAs. Save yourself a headache. Something else that I mentioned in the video but didn't cover thoroughly is your radio choice selection. You can use really almost any radio. That dash kit is very accommodating. I recommend those sticking with something name brand with the right sizing and also making sure that the radio has the correct amount of RCA ports. So like you saw in the video that AOTA radio didn't have the RCA ports we needed so we need to use those line out converters. That's always a solution, it's just a very annoying one. You're better off just getting a radio that has all the right ports so you can keep your steering wheel controls, you can keep control of all your subwoofer and your speakers independently. There's really no, again, no restrictions when it comes to the radios. Their dash kit is, like you can see the factory radio is pretty big, so you don't really have any size restrictions. So the radio is up to you. Uh, if you're looking for radio kits or you're looking to simplify your installation, I really recommend what we offer on our website. Our plug and play harness will save you a lot of time. And then if you're looking for everything in one convenient package, then we have the complete kit. If you wanna just get everything from us because you wanna be able to call us if something goes wrong, then you can pick up a radio kit, which will bring a radio, the dash kit, steering wheel control, and a plug and play harness. And then you have our full back support. So if something goes wrong or you're trying to add subs, you're trying to do something else, we can definitely help you out. That's really it guys. If you're having issues with your installation, feel free to leave a comment down below and we'll see if we can help you. If you have the ELS equipped or navigation equipped TSX and you're thinking about replacing the radio in your TSX, we'd love to talk to you. We have some options available. They just need to be tested. We haven't had a vehicle to test them on yet. So if you want to be a beta tester, feel free to leave a comment down below and we'll get in touch with you. That's going to wrap up the video. I hope this information was useful. I hope you can make a decision whether you want to place your radio or not. And if you need any help, feel free to leave a comment down below. Uh, thanks for watching. Make sure you like the video, subscribe. We always have content for your Acura.